All right. So in this lecture, we're gonna talk about <coughs> uh, nerve-based objects. All right, and uh, difference between them and what we've been using so far, uh, which are polygons. So the main difference between them, uh, the nerve-based objects, and these polygons is that the polygons are usually based on um, are composed of these um, components, which are usually vertices, edges and faces. All right. The difference between these and nerves is that nerves are kind of based on curves um, <coughs> and not necessarily on geometry like uh, like these objects. Um, and uh, uh, let's talk about what you need to uh, I guess use to be able to create this nerve based objects. All right. Now there are some that come uh, by default <coughs> In uh, in Maya, which are primitives, just like the ones that that we created here. And again, let me just kind of come here and create a couple one of, of these. And again, the composition of these are a little different. These are curve based, <coughs> and instead of uh, vertices, we have control vertex, and then uh, halts. All right, now. <coughs> if I go into the control vertex, you're going to see these dots that are kind of floating around this object. But again, unlike vertices, they're not actually, um, they're more like control points that you can kind of pull and, 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 and move around. Uh, and then we have this holes, which actually uh, would actually select uh, a whole segment of it. So, for instance, if I select this hole, rather than selecting an edge, you're selecting this curve that's composing uh, these two patches of geometry. Okay, and there isn't really much that you can do with these. Uh, you can't really modify them the way that you would use. Uh, I mean, the way that you would uh, geometry like this. Um, <coughs> but you can create some customized ones um, based on, on curvature that you create yourself. So I'm gonna get rid of this of, of this primitive right here, <coughs> and I'm gonna address these curve tools. All right. Now, um, curve tools they, they basically draw curvature in your in your viewport. Okay. Um, and there's a couple different tools that you can use that you can do that with. <coughs> uh, and I'm just gonna stick to a couple of these. They all they all kind of do the same, but a little bit differently. Um, so, for instance, if you have something like the CV curve, you can kind of come here and draw some curvature, all right? And you can see that this one kind of gives you an idea where the control curves are going to be once you draw them. <coughs> and if I just kind of right click on this and I go into control vertices, I will know where those controls are going to be, all right? Then we have the EP curve. All right, and again, this one's a little bit different because it kind of lets us know where the curvature is kind of going, but it's not really giving us an idea of where the uh, control vertices are going to be. So they are going to be found kind of all over the place. <coughs> uh, now, the ones that I'm going to be using the most are these Vessier curves and the pencil curve. And the reason why I like to use these the most is because they're more um, they're more flexible as far as what you can do with them. All right, the Vessier curve. The nice thing about it is that uh, if you make a click and drag, it actually creates a handle for you to go back to and kind of change the curvature of the object. The other two curve tools don't allow for that. So let's say I want a curvature like this, <coughs> I'm gonna click out, and then I right click and I go back into my control vertex. All these points are gonna have a handle that I can go back here and kind of, uh, you know fix if, if I need to kind of change the curvature. And then the last one being the, p the pencil curve tool, which the nice thing about it is that you can come in here and just draw what you want. So I'm going to be actually using this one um, for an exercise later, but let me just show you what it does. All right. Now the downside of the, of the pencil one is that it kind of gives you a little bit too many uh, control points <coughs> and or control vertices so uh, you just kind of have to be mindful of that because that could become an issue now <coughs> um, 
let's talk about what you can do with these kind of curvature based objects okay because again uh, having primitives and the curves themselves don't really kind of tell you what you can do with these so um, I'm gonna go into my display and I'm just gonna increase the number of subdivisions on my grid okay and uh, the idea here is that I want to be able to snap my curve tool into uh, this, this grid so I can draw something in it all right <coughs> now uh, before we continue when you're working with uh, nerve objects and curves we're no longer working with polygons all right so we're gonna have to switch the mode that we're on right now and we're gonna switch to surfaces okay now <coughs> let's just go ahead and uh, draw something and again the, the following exercise is going to give you an idea how you go about creating a doorknob uh, by using curve tools and then using uh, the tools available once you change to the surface mode so I'm going to use the Vezier curve tool and I'm going to turn on my snap to grid alright I'm going to draw a couple points here and one here all right so <coughs> this is all I'm gonna need to be able to draw that, that doorknob all right now the reason for that is because uh, the curve tool uh, the sorry the surface tools are gonna allow me to create um, nerve based geometry based on what I just did here now one thing to keep in mind is that when you create any curve object or any nerve surfaces in your uh, in your viewport the the, the pivot's going to be right at zero 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 so if you want it to be with your object uh, you can either manipulate it or just go to modify and center that pivot <coughs> all right now um, let's go into our surface uh, tools and I'm actually going to be using surfaces all right and then I'm going to click once I click here I'm just going to click on this dotted line so I can um, detach this tab that has the tools that I'm going to be using. Now, <coughs> I'm going to be focusing mostly on these three right here. Uh, well, actually, these two: revolve and loft. All right. Now, I'm going to be using revolve to be able to create the doorknob based on this geometry. So, what on this curve? Sorry. So, what it does <coughs> is that it takes the curvature of the spline that we created and then it's going to create a, a patch based of curves and it's going to revolve around it and create a shape <coughs> so uh, I'm just, while selecting my curve here I'm just going to click on revolve alright and one of the first things you're going to see is some sort of kind of weird patch now one of the things that you need to know about this tool is that it bases this um, uh, uh, curve based geometry on the axis that is created on <coughs> so uh, right now is not creating this um, revolving the way we want to so just like everything else that we usually create uh, in Maya you know we have options in our channel box so if I go into my input on the revolve <coughs> I'm gonna see that uh, right now it's kind of do base I mean it's basing this kind of revolving around it based on the y-axis perhaps all I need to do is kind of change it to zero and we'll see a change on this and that doesn't seem to be doing the work so let's just try different axes and again notice that the difference in in axis is gonna change whatever curvature you're creating Let me just undo this okay so it seems like it's we're gonna be using the seek uh, axis for this but another thing that you need to keep in mind with these um, kind of spline based objects is that there's a history um, dependency between the two alright now <coughs> remember that when I um, when I first created this curve object uh, I took it and I changed the pivot point so it would be centered to a point for this to work perfectly, it would have the pivot would have to be in the center of the object that I wanted. Okay, so um, <coughs> the change that I did here, and again, I'm just going to go back into my left viewport here, is that since the curve, the 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 nerve base object that I created and the curve that I created initially have a dependency between each other, so the um, 
the shape of this is going to change based on the position of my curvature. All right. So in essence, what I did here is that I only drew half of the shape of the object that I wanted to create, and then I made it revolve around to create the shape of this doorknob. All right. <clears throat> now, if I if I just wanted to, uh, and again, uh, like I mentioned before. We just created this patch based on the, on on curves right here and the pivots right the uh, zero zero zero. If we want to make sure that it's at the center of the object, we have to make sure we go into edit, uh, sorry, modify, and set it to pivot. <coughs> All right. Now I can take this object and I can put it wherever wherever it needs to go. And again, notice that it needs to be scale. But <coughs> uh, if I select this curve and I move it around, notice that it's going to change the shape of my nerve base object here. And again, it's because from the beginning there's been a dependency between the two because the curvature of this object has been based on the initial curvature created. So um, even if you selected both of them and directed them at the same time, there is going to be some kind of weird side effects to what we're doing here. So, in order to avoid this, we want to make sure that the dependency between the object and the curve are no lo is no longer there. To do that, we just select the nerve base uh, surface here. We're going to go to modify, sorry, edit, and we're going to delete by type history. What it does is that it deletes all the history of the object, and now there isn't any dependency between what was there before. So I can get rid of this uh, the spline with no problem. I can put this wherever it needs to go. Scale it down if I need to. And just put it in place and assign it a texture uh, just to make sure it's done. So just place it somewhere over here. Right click on it. Go to assign existing material and just use the same metal material that I've been using for all these bars. Alright, so that's the doorknob. Now, another object that I need to create to finalize the scene, it's a flag that's actually on my reference images and it's a, a, a one of those early flags that don't have the 50 stars and needs to be hanged here. Okay. Now, I could go through the process of creating something like that with a plane and uh, just subdividing it a lot and making sure that it's, it's smooth and everything. But again, one of the, one of the nice things about this nerve based objects is that, uh, you know, there, it's kind of, uh, the reason you use them is so that you can create kind of organic shapes like this without that much effort. <coughs> so, let me go back into my left viewport. Alright. And I'm going to be using, we use Revolve and again, that one just kind of revolves the curvature and it creates an object with it. The next one we're going to be using is Loft. <coughs> and uh, so again, we're going to be creating a flag for this. So uh, I'm going to be creating, I'm going to be using the Pencil Curve tool. And again, the idea is just so I can kind of draw, draw some nice curvature. Um, but I could very well stick to the vest here as well. Um, so I'm going to go here and just draw someone along the lines of this. Okay, And again, the idea is that these points represent one end of the flag and at this point they're kind of attached uh, to the flagpole. Now, uh, again, as always, the pivot's going to appear at zero, zero, zero. so if we want it to be with the object, we just have to center it. Okay. Now, in order for Loft to work, there needs to be a minimum of at least two curves. And they both have to have the same amount of control vertices. Otherwise, it's not going to work very well. So, <coughs> uh, again, just to kind of make it easy here, I'm going to make a duplicate of this. Control D. And just place it somewhere over here. <coughs> um, okay, and now we have two, cur two curves with same amount of control vertices. And now we're going to be creating a surface based on these two by selecting loft. So select one, then select the second one, and then just click on loft. All right. Now, <coughs> again, notice that it created a uh, nerve based surface based on the curvature of these two. Now, since we're there on the left viewport, it's going to be pretty flat. But just like um, 
in the first example with Revolve, this surface is uh, has a history dependency with the with the original uh, curve objects that I cre that I created with. So if I wanted to go back here and go into the control vertices and change that a little bit, I can still do that, and it'll affect the object as well. So uh, I'm also going to double click on my move tool, and I'm going to turn on soft selection, so I can uh, manipulate more than one um, control vertex at the same time. And just deselected that by accident. All right, and we can increase that fall off a little bit so it affects more than what we need here. All right, and as you can see, anything that I do to the curvature is uh, is affecting also this uh, this patch of geometry that we created with it. All right, all right, and again, I'm trying to give it a little bit of dimension here because we originally did this uh, on a side viewport so it didn't account for whatever was happening in the front alright and I can also take these points drive them back if I want to so it looks like that flag is going to be hanging <coughs> and I'm going to do the same thing here at the front alright just change these points a little bit now again uh, both of these lines need to have the same number of uh, curve points uh, or control vertices for this to work but they don't need to have the same position or anything like that you can still come in here and change that if you want to and let's just go ahead and move some of these around and again the idea here is just to kind of create some sort of organic cloth looking so you would do something like this if you want to create curtains uh, or you know this instance uh, like in this instance uh, a flag alright so this is gonna work well <coughs> uh, you also need to keep in mind that uh, yes there is a history dependency between um, the two curves that we originally used to create these objects but uh, there's you can you also have the ability to go into the actual patch of, of nerve geometry and affect it into this sub object mode of of this object so if I right click on this patch alone I can go into the control vertices that are part of this alright and again these are different from what uh, we had here with the splines and you know we can use these to actually give our flag a little bit more interest here <coughs> alright and again it looks like you know our our flag is getting a little boxy here and, and, and just like with uh, geometry it's because it might not have enough subdivisions here in order to do what it needs to do so <coughs> uh, we talk about the components of the um, of these surfaces so one of them is contr the control vertices one of them is the holes which allows you to select a whole line a, lo a, a whole uh, segment of control vertices but you can actually come in here and actually uh, increase the um, uh, or add more curvature to this object and the way that you do this is by using isoporms all right so uh, again we have this selected let's say I wanted to come here and add a couple more subdivisions so I can give this flag a little bit more interest so <coughs> the isoporms are going to be created based on uh, the segments that are already here so if I select this one it's going to allow me to draw a line going down in this direction. If I select one from the side, it's going to allow me to draw one in this direction. So while holding shift, I'm going to draw more than one, and now I have two um, isoporms that, I, that we can add to this. <coughs> but the isoporm just works as a marker. This in itself doesn't really add anything to this surface. So in order for us to add anything to this, we have to go into Edit Nerves, and then insert the isoporms. So when we click on this, we're going to notice that it actually added another segment of control vertices right here. All right. And now with more subdivisions, we can come here and just move this around. <coughs> Geometry is not going to be as boxy. It's going to give our flag a little bit more interest. Okay. So, <coughs> uh, all right. So we created the curves. We use the loft uh, surfaces to create this flag, and then we uh, modify the curves so we can give it uh, a little bit more interest here, and we went to the actual 
nerf surface and added uh, more control vertices so we can give it a little more interest here. Now we need to add a texture to this. <coughs> so I'm going to go into my left viewport here. All right, and uh, I'm going to right click here and go into assign favorite material here. Uh, uh, sorry, assign a new material. So I'm just going to click on that. <coughs> I'm going to give it a blend material here. It's going to create a new material here on my attributes for my uh, flag object. All right, and uh, this doesn't need to be very reflective so or reflective at all. So I'm just going to change that. All right and not a lot of specularity on this either because <coughs> again it's a piece of cloth alright so let's just leave it at that then I'm going to go into the color <coughs> go into file alright and then I'm going to add an image uh, for the texture of the object in this case it's a flag so let's just see if we can find it into in my source images alright so I'm gonna open this up okay so it didn't really map out the way we want to but we can go into the place to the texture and kinda rotate this around till it fits the way we want to which is like this now one thing that you gotta keep in mind with these um, nerve surfaces is that unlike <coughs> polygons they do not have UV coordinates um, so you cannot go back into the polygons and add UV coordinates for this to work um, you may turn these objects into polygons, but <coughs> again, in this case, this is not necessary. Last thing I'm going to do before I move it into place, it's uh, actually uh, go into edit and delete the history, so they're not dependent on the splines that we created there originally. Then I'm going to center the object. I mean, the center of the pivot. Go here into my left orthographic viewport, and just place it where it needs to go. along the lines of that <coughs> all right so um, and we can get rid of this object now that we don't have any need for them all right so just to reiterate what was covered in this uh, lesson we went over <coughs> nerve primitives also uh, your curve tools we also explain how uh, um, create uh, surface based objects uh, by switching from the polygon mode to surfaces by using the surfaces tool uh, we use the revolve to be able to create this doorknob and again uh, you usually create half of the shape and then uh, revolve would kind of create the rest of it <coughs> and all you got to do is make sure that it's revolving um, on the on the axis that you need to do and then we create this flag using the loft thing and we also talked about how to uh, insert isoforms and how to manipulate uh, this type of uh, nerve geometry to give it a little bit of interest. Okay, this concludes this lesson.